Hi, this is Christian. So this is part two of the Flask application we've been developing. If you have not completed the part one yet, so make sure you watch that first. All right, so now back in the IDE, I'm going to go and um, activate my environment first. Script, activate. Okay, now I'm on. I want to go ahead and run again just to make sure it's still working. So Flask run, and I'm at port 5000. So I'm going to go load my other browser and uh, let's see, I should go back to this page. Uh, not that one. Let's try again. Maybe it should be just 5,000. Okay, so this is the one. And our providers is all here. And we were able to add data successfully last time and so forth. Okay, so now we're going to perform the edit and the delete uh, operations. Okay, so let's look at the edit first. Now, when you do the edit, right? So we're gonna uh, build or create a new URL for this edit slash with an ID. And the form for the edit will look very similar to the add. So it will look the same as this. We're gonna just pre-populate the data fr uh, from the list, okay? Based on that selected ID. And then instead of saying add provider, we're just gonna say update provider. Okay, and then once we update it, it should take us back to the providers page and we should see the update information right here on the screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that first. So I'm gonna open the app and the routes file. So in here we have, uh, let me close this terminal now. So we have the ad here. It will look very similar to this. Um, so I'm gonna copy Maybe just uh, well. Let me just, first of all. Let me um. Let me do this. Uh, I don't know why it's not wrapping. I just wanted to set the wrapping. Let me go ahead and set that first. I really don't like that um, feature. So it's in the edit. Just give me a moment here. Setting and I want to change the wrap and just turn the wrap on. Okay. Um. I think that's the one. Uh, yeah, maybe that's it. So let's save this and then now it should be auto wrap. Okay, so I'm going to copy all of this and we'll put right below here. And we'll change it to say this is going to be um, edit, or in this case, will be update, right? Okay, so the URL will be edit followed by an ID. So in Flask, you reference the ID by using a angle bracket like this inside the bracket we'll just do the very simple one there are other ways to do it but inside here we're going to give a variable so whatever this variable is you're going to access it directly from the request okay uh, the function will actually grab that by default so i'm going to just call it id okay so that is the id and then the function here will be called um, uh, edit and then inside here is the ID variable. So this ID variable must match this ID you put inside here, okay? So that is the first argument we're gonna grab, grab from the URL. And inside here then, we're going to update this a little bit. Um, <clears throat> one thing for sure is that once we do the edit, right, it comes back from the form, as you can see, this looks very similar to the ad, right? It's gonna come to the post as well. The only thing is that when we edit, the form, let's say that we're not going, we're not going to go and, you know, edit the ID. We'll leave it out. Okay. So we'll leave the ID out. Only uh, generate a random ID when we add a new provider. Otherwise, we're not going to touch the ID. And then when we build the provider, the ID here will be the same ID as it was before, which is fine in this case. So as you can see, it looks exactly the same. Okay. So we get this type of, you know, rep rep repetitive code the first thing that comes to mind should be a function, okay? So we're going to put this into a function and we'll let a function build this object and then return it back to us. We're just gonna use it, right? So we can save you, you know, a couple of file uh, lines of code. And if you can be using this again and again, it saves you a lot of code, lines of code. All right, so um, why don't we do that first? And I'm gonna just gonna do right here so we can see it and then we'll move that later, all right? So let's just say I do a function here. I would say um, get provider um, 
how should I say, from care provider, what should we call it? Uh, maybe not get, I'm actually, I'm actually building, so I'm not getting, I'm gonna go build um, provider objects, okay? And what I, what I need from that function, I need the ID or the request object, right? I need to pass in the request object. I need this object here. And I also need the ID, okay? So I'll put ID here. So we add a new object. You're gonna pass that to the function. And then inside the function is this whole thing. I'm gonna put this whole thing here. I move everything, put inside this function. And then wanna build the ID here, the object, I'm gonna return it. So you can do that. Okay, that's okay. Or you can just simply return the whole thing in one go, like that. Okay, we'll just we'll make it short. So I'm gonna return that object. And notice I'm not doing any validation here. So normally you would probably wanna do that. But in this case, I think we're just gonna leave it as is. Okay, so I return the provider as an object. It comes back down here. And then this is the add function, by the way. I'm gonna go ahead and put provider is equal to um, build provider object. We pass to that function the ID, actually the request first, and then the ID. Okay, it's gonna build that, returns that object to a provider variable, and then we append that to the list. Great. So now we do the same thing down here for the edit, right? So this part is going to be exactly the same as above. And then the only thing is that notice we did not generate the ID. It's a new ID. We don't do that. We're just going to grab the current ID. So whatever the ID is, right? And we'll just use it. Now, the only thing is that when you submit the form back, okay, the uh, it depends how you set up your form. The ID may not exist anymore. So you either have to have a hidden form, you get that from the request that form, or you can also include that in the URL, it comes back in the same URL pattern and then grab that ID here. So since our setup is already like this, I'm gonna update the form to include the ID in the URL, okay? So, um, <clears throat> so when the ID comes back, we uh, if it's a post, yes it is, we're gonna go and build the provider, right? Because we don't know which field was altered, uh, or generally there are other ways to do it, but the way I'm doing here is more of a brute force approach where I'm, I'm basically rebuilding the entire uh, provider object as a new object uh, to include whatever data has been sent over from the form, right? As opposed to if there's a change only in the, in the first name, then that's the only thing that's changed. We just alter that. But that's another day, another um, uh, time. If you want to build a class to uh, a form class to actually sync to the form itself, then that's the way you do it. But for this one, we're gonna build the entire object. And then instead of appending it, we're not gonna append that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something like this. We're gonna find the index position of this object, and then we're gonna assign that with the new provider. So now, how do we know which provider it is? Right, certainly it's not the ID. So we need to find out where this provider is matching this particular ID, right? So to do that, then we have to find out, we have to do a, um, a fetch, okay? So we will do that um, through a function. Again, we use the function to, um, you know, find the ID uh, position in the list, and then maybe return the index position of that um, object, and then we know where to, you know, where to go from there, right? So I'm gonna go up here and I'm just going and add another function up here. This time we'll say, um, maybe get the provider um, index. And I need the ID and also need the entire list. So uh, I wanna call it the same name, providers underscore list. <clears throat> so now there are, I'm sure a couple ways to do this, but the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna search in in that list of um, objects and then compare each of it, the list IDs to the current ID I'm, I'm getting here. If it matches, then I'm going to return the index position, okay? So 
um, I'm going to do a range. So for i, mean the index position, and the range <clears throat> between zero, the first uh, parameter or first on the list, all the way to the end of the list. So we'll call the len function, and we'll pass in the providers list. Right, all the way to the end of the list. And if it, if then we're going to say if the providers list of i is equal to the ID, if that is the case, then we're going to return that I, which is the index, okay? And if it's not found, then let's say we'll return maybe um, none, okay? Now, only thing is you have to be careful because when we access the ID in the list, if you look at our model, right, our list is actually a number as opposed to a string. So when you, when you pass the ID from the URL, like down here, okay, because I'm passing this ID from the URL to a um, if I, to that function, I need to convert that ID to a number. You can do it here, or you can do inside here. Okay, it's entirely up to you. Um, so if, if we do outside, then we'll assume that that is in, in already a, a number. Okay, so just to be safe, maybe we can do it in here. Um, Slightly up to you. So I'm going to say this ID here has to be the integer. And all you have to do is just put that inside the int function like that, right? Because I know that my ID is a number. So whatever it is being compared to must also be an integer. And if that matches, return the index position, and then we're good. So then down here, when we look for the provider, so you're going to go and uh, maybe create a, um, you know, we'll just do one step at a time. So I'll do here, uh, index is equal to get provider ID index. I pass in again the um, ID and then also the list, right? Now about the equal sign. So I'm going to get the index coming back, but it may, it may not be found, right? So if it's not found, you can kind of check to make sure that's true. And uh, if it's not found, then I want to say, if index is not um, not uh, none, if that's the case, then go ahead and you know update the index at that position with the new provider. Otherwise, you know nothing changes. Okay, and then we're going to return or redirect the users back to the provider's page to see the updated um, information. Um, yeah, we'll see if that is the case. Um, okay, so this is only for when we submit the form. Now, when we load the edit form page, we also need to populate the form. So that means that we're going to get the ID just like this, and then, you know, grab the ID from the user, uh, uh, the entire list. And then we and then pull that ID and then pass it to the form. So I need to do um, hmm, interesting. That means okay. So I might have to um, put this outside. Okay, so let's put this outside because I'm gonna do the whole thing again. So let's put out here. You don't have to do it twice. I'm gonna get the index. Okay. And then um, down here, I do the same thing. Uh, if index is not no, not none, then the provider is going to be equal to the provider list of that index. Okay, and then we'll, we'll pass this provider to the uh, form to pre-populate the form, right? Otherwise, it's going to be a no value, and uh, that could lead to a problem, but we'll see. So here, it would say form, the edit form. We don't have that form, but we're going to build one. And here, just say update provider. OK, um, let's see. Yeah, maybe looks good to me. So um, go ahead and save this now. Now we need to create a template for the edit. So in the providers here, again, it will look very similar to the add form. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this, okay? So I'm gonna just do a copy and paste. 
writing here. And um, uh, control C, control V shortcut. And then right click on this to rename it, to call it uh, edit provider dash edit dash form. Okay, make sure it matches your, your thing here. So now when you open this form, it will look very similar. I'm gonna change it just to say update. So it makes sense. Here would be update, um, update provider. Um, the, let's see, okay. So down here, we just say update provider for the button as well. Now, so these field will be the same as they are. The only thing we need to do is we need to pre-fill these fields, right? And remember that when we add, when we load this form, we're gonna pass the object provider to the form so we can access all their fields. So let me turn this one off. So over here then, we're going to um, start with the name first, the ID here to require. So let's put here the value. It's gonna be bound to the provider of the uh, first name. It'll look like that. Let me copy this and I'm gonna put it right here. <clears throat> Add this field and the company field down here as well. Okay, I'm just gonna copy and paste these in so they are uh, there should be correct. All right, that looks good. And then finally up here, we want to change this URL to say not add but edit and also we want to include the id right when we um when we submit this form we want to include the id which is in this case is um, provider of id um yeah you could right absolutely you can do this which is okay because it's that provider or i mean other way you can do it too because you know that you found the id already you can also include here like ID is equal to ID. Okay, either way, like that's fine too. If I do it this way, then in my form, I would just say, you know, ID, right? And that's okay. Maybe I'll just do it that way. We'll see. Um, so save this file. And then, uh, yeah, it looks okay. We'll see. And let's go to the browser and give it a spin. So let's refresh the page. I'm going to go and do the edit. <clears throat> Some errors. Okay, it says local variable provider is not uh, used before assignment. Line number um, 77. So let's take a look there. I'll probably use it before I've been created. So 77. So right here, provider. Uh, the way I do this, because you know this may not exist inside the, um, the um, variable here. So that means um <clears throat> got an index here comes back and if it's a get then it's going to load this part let me separate this out it's a little confusing provider should be equal to that so before i do this maybe up here somewhere i'm going to put um let's do this we put provider is equal to um you know none okay so it's pretty clear uh, so that doesn't cause an issue down here so let's save this and try again and I'm just gonna refresh it. Okay, so something is, is it's loading the form, but our data is not populated. So that means we did not load the correct data. So let's try again. Go here, and I'm gonna go and edit. Okay, it loads, it did, it does load the form, it just doesn't load the data. So let's take a look and see how um, to fix that. So when we load the data, it goes in here, we look at the index. So that means that our index was not um, doing uh, correctly. So if I go over here to the index function and we look at the range from the zero to the list and we check to see if the, oh yeah, I can just do that, right? It's not the ID. I mean, the provider's object of that list, but then what am I comparing, right? I missed that. Uh, comparing the ID field. So I do another one here like that, okay? So I did not do that correctly. So let's save that and let's go back and do it again. Let's go and then edit. 
All right, here we go. So we got the data pre-populated. Now I want to put just um, a DVD here and just put some information here. Make sure they are updated. Just some fake information and update. So it does it does seem to work. Uh, it takes us back to this page, but then have a problem here because it says this URL is not found. So um, edit provider slash the ID. And I thought we had that before. Let's take a look. <clears throat> so it goes back here. Oh, I call it just edit, right? Just edit. But in our form, we call it edit provider. So let's change that to just edit. There we go. It's really good experience to go through this. So you can see I'm not perfect. <laughs> um, you debug as you go. So let's go back again. And um, I'm going to go just provide an update, see what happens. Okay. I probably didn't update the URL. One more time. So DDD, let's just put everything DDD here. Update. Perfect. So you can see that now the ID of the name, the last name have been updated. We did not touch the ID field because we want to, we don't want to, you know, change that. All right. So that is pretty good. And I could go back again and update. And again, now it fails because whatever reason I have a problem, it doesn't load the data. So let's take a look and see why. <clears throat> so what is the problem, right? So I guess we can check. Um, let's go back and try again. If I load a different one, and that seems to work. When I load the one I updated, I, it doesn't work. So I did load the correct ID. And so I think what's causing this is that when I, let's see, if I, when I um, send the data, when I send the ID over to, to, um, to pull the, pull the uh, index. Now, remember when I pass, when I load the ID, right, it comes in as a string, even though it's a number. It's a string. So when the ID is passed to the function up here, get the ID, compare that. I did convert it to an integer already, which is great, right? That's correct. And then the problem was when I did the edit, the very first edit, when I go in here, build the object here, I pass in the ID. Remember, ID is also still a string, right? So this function here, when I build the object up here, notice. I did not convert that to an integer. So once I edit it, this ID is actually a string, okay? So again, you have to take care of it either here at the function level or outside here. So in this case, I wanna assume that, you know, the function is perfect. This ID should be all integer. So I, I did here in the other one where I actually converted here. So this time, I'm just gonna show you that um, a different way is I want to convert this in here to an integer, okay? So when you do the build ID here, um, do something like this. I wanna convert, convert it before I send it in. Again, this is just another way. You can choose either way you want, all right? Maybe you wanna convert it first before you do that. Uh, there's an, an, another way too. Up here, you can make this into an integer and um, submit that in. So it'll be automatically converted to an integer. I mean, uh, lots of ways. So let's see if this one here solves the problem, okay? So save that, go back to um, the form and let's go ahead and, um, you know, let's refresh our page again. Okay, let's edit this one and I do it again, TTT, just those two, update. So it's updated, if I should be able to edit again. There you go, okay? So that was um, the problem. Perfect. All right, so now we are able to edit our uh, data. The next one is we want to delete each of these records. So if I click on it, as you can see, it looks very similar to the edit. I pull the ID and then from that ID, I'm gonna search in the list to find the index position and I'm gonna purge it from the list. That is the logic here, right? So let's go back to our code and see what we can do. <clears throat> so now, um, so I'm going to go and create the other API. I will go ahead and just copy this part. We'll put it down here. And we'll call it um, delete. And we're just going to do delete one. Just to do one, one with the ID. So it will say delete with the ID. 
And really, in this case, we don't really care about the post again, okay? So okay, I, I can leave it there, it's fine, I can remove it, because, because we're not doing anything from the post. So this would be delete, and then um, getting that from the ID field. Okay, so now the, the process is kind of similar to the edit. We first must find the index of this particular um, object. So I'm gonna go here again, make sure, well, you know, this will be converted inside a function, that's fine. So when I get the index, if the index is not, um, is not none, that means it's, it's found, then I can call the delete function, DEL function, and you just basically delete that from the providers list um, <clears throat> of that index. That's all, right? I will purge it. And then once that's done, then you can you know redirect to a different page, or if it doesn't really matter, then you can just go ahead and uh, render um, the provider's template. I'm gonna go in provider's template will be, um, yeah, let me go back up here. I'm gonna copy this provider's, uh, where is it at? Uh, yeah, let's just do a redirect. So I don't have to worry about um, passing all this data. So I'm gonna do here, regardless, you know, whether it's successful or not, I'm gonna go and redirect to the uh, provider's list, which, okay. And if that's successfully purged, you should see a reduction on the list. Um, so let's go and uh, take a look. And then, here we go, the first one. Okay, you did see that it's now gone. Right? You probably want to do another um, little uh, computation to show the number of, of records here, but it did, it did indeed um, disappear. Okay, so again, if I do that one here, tell them, and it's now gone. Okay, perfect. So that's how you delete. Very simple, very easy. And I will um, go back and just do one more refactor, and then we will be done for this one here. Okay, so now you see that um, these functions are quite useful because you know you will use them again and again. So I don't like to put my functions all in the same place here. So if you have any of these type of functions, these are considered as utility functions, or sometimes you can call it helper functions, you can move them into another directory, right? Just like these. So I'm gonna go into um, maybe in the app or even outside of it, it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll put outside of the, um, in the root directory, put here functions. Instead of function, just like before, um, init file, okay? And then I'm gonna create my functions file. We will call it um, um, util underscore functions dot pi. Okay, and then I'm gonna copy and move, well, actually gonna move these two functions into that util function.py, all right? Save that, and then I'm going to import that in here. So from the um, functions directory, dot uh, util functions file, import the get index and get um, build provider object. Okay, so let's do those two functions. Now, and then once you get that, and then up here in the top, we're not gonna, we have to import those in. So like this one here, import from the uh, functions, import the get provided index and build provided object. Here we go. And then our code should still work just like before. <clears throat> okay. Um, so you can see how, you know, this works. Of course, you could also add another function instead of, um, you know, how I did it here. Let's see. When we retrieve the provider, uh, like right here, right? We, um, like right here, we get the provider from this index, um, which is okay in this case. Once you find the index, then you can just use that to pull the, the, um, the provider out of that. You can use it here. We use it also here as well, right? When you want to do a fetch by one, you would do exactly just like this. 
Another way you can do is that instead of you know accessing directly this way, you can write a function to do that. So instead of saying providers underscore list index, I'm just going to say get provider, right? And we can easily do that over here. For example, I'm going to go down here and function get provider. Instead of the index, I'm just going to get the provider. The, um, I also need the ID and the list here. So let's put that in here. And then, so in here now, because I already have the index, I still need that. So what I'll do is um, you will then get the index just like before. I'm going to say um, index is equal to get provider index ID and the providers list. Okay, and I'll do here if the index is not none. We can return the uh, providers list of that index, right? Otherwise, return maybe return none. Okay, so if you want to get the index, you use this function. If you want you to get the provider, you use this function. Okay, so let me save that and let's go import that in here as well. The get provider function, good. And then up here, make sure we include that in the import up here else. Also, your get provider, perfect. So now down here where I have um, the, you know, get the index here, like once I got the index. So instead of, uh, um, you know, I see that's fine. Uh, like right here, right? Instead of doing this way, I could then do it this way. Get provider equal to get provider. And I pass in the index. I mean, the ID and the provider list. Okay. Just make your code a little bit more, um, you know, reusable and, and uh, um, affordable for other usage. So then I do the same thing down here for the, well, I actually, no, this one here, I need the index, right? I need to know the index so I can purge it. But this one, I need the index and I need to get the, from the list. So instead of doing this way, you just do this and then you know use the index function to do other things. So I think that should still work. So let's see, we'll can try one more time before we call this off. So we go, I'm gonna do an edit her again. Okay, so you can see here it works fine. And I delete that and perfect. All right, so that is it. Now we have time, we can go ahead and, you know, do a, um, a login, a contact register. The logic is the same. Uh, also, maybe you can implement the delete all, add another button, maybe up here or down here somewhere to say delete all, and that will go to the delete uh, link. But then once you get there, you know, don't provide the, um, the ID, right? So it will delete everything. And uh, okay, so I hope that was helpful. Have any questions, please let me know.